Hi guys, it's Abby from Autumn of Pelinor and today I'm going to be doing my December and Christmas book haul. So I got a number of books as you might have seen from the thumbnail. Uh, I wasn't expecting to get this many, I was expecting to haul four books up until the 21st of December. And then I was expecting to haul six books and then it went a bit mad at the end of the year. So yeah, <laughs> let's go through them. So the first book that I bought in December was Bazaar of Bad Dreams by Stephen King. This is an anthology of short stories written by him, a kind of thrillery as far as I can tell. It looks really interesting. It's 500 pages but with it being short stories it shouldn't be so difficult to get through as a regular kind of 500 page Stephen King and I'm really enjoying 112263. I'm not very far through it still um, but I'm really enjoying it so hopefully I still enjoy his writing style for this one. Where am I going to put them all? <laughs> Let's move these all about a little bit. Come on, there we go. Right, so oh, Bazaar of Bad Dreams. Then I saw Heir to the Throne by Alvin Hamilton. I have read this entire series, I loved it all, but I either read them on ebook or borrowed them from the library, or both borrowed an ebook from the library. So I want to get the physical copies. So I've now got the third book, and I need to get Rebel of the Sands and Hero of the Fall. Is this the third one? Or is this the second one? I think this is the second one. Why did I think this was the third one? I think Hero at the Falls is the third one. Also Rebecca with a K owned this before me. But yes, I think it's the second one. Before. Either way, I've got one of the books and I don't have Rebel at the Sands. So I need to get them at some point. Eventually. Maybe. Maybe not. But yes, so that is a name. I just changed the lighting a little bit more. I don't know how that's going to come across on camera. I'm trying new things, so we'll see. But I moved the light and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> we'll find out. Anyway, the next book I got was Air of Fire by, Ka by Cassandra Lair by Sarah J Maas. Uh, I own hey, Crown of Midnight. Um, that was bought for me by the lovely Carrie. Uh, I'll link her channel down below. And so when I spotted this, which is the third book, that's the second in the Throne of Glass series, I knew I just had to pick it up because I would have picked up Crown of Midnight a lot sooner if it had appeared anywhere and it didn't. Ironically, after my birthday I found Crown of Midnight in a shop so I could have bought it secondhand but now I've got the first three books in the trilogy series. <laughs> it's one of those days so getting there. And then I spotted this one. Why do I do this to myself? So this is Edge of Eternity, this is the third book in the Centuries trilogy. I now own all three of them, despite it being about that far into the first book. Um, I like what I've read so far, I just, in my old age, I get intimidated by larger books. But I do want to get to them eventually, and now I own the entire series, so I don't need to buy any more Ken for it. I think there's like one more book that would complete another trilogy I have and then I can stop until I've actually read some of his books. Uh, then I'm going to get on to the unexpected ones, the presents. So what order am I going to put them in? This order. So the first present that I opened was from my partner's mother, um, my boyfriend's mum, and she got me The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, which is a pseudonym for JK Rowling. I've wanted to read this for a while, I love a good thriller and I just I hadn't been able to pick this one up, I hadn't spotted it in Good Nick in a charity shop so I'm really grateful that Jan got me this. Um, she's a lovely boyfriend's mum, what am I meant to call her, but she's a lovely woman um, and I'm really really grateful that I can finally start this. There's obviously a lot of issues with JK Rowling right now um, and people find her adult writing very different to her childhood writing obviously but I kind of enjoyed The Casual Vacancy. I read it when I was 17 so I was pretty confused the entire way through. Um, I think it's probably the second or third adult novel I read and the others were thrillers whereas Casual Vacancy is a contemporary that has no 
point. I do this a lot, but it doesn't it doesn't have a point to it really. So, and there was a lot of changing points of view, so I was very confused a lot of the way through. But so basically, I'm saying I want to read it again at some point in my life. But I'm interested to see how the scrolling goes, and I'm going to separate the writing from the writer. I do not agree with her views. I exactly have the have the exact opposite opinion about trans women and men and all of that but we'll see how her writing is I forgot to haul a book how dare I so I'm squeezing this in here um, my parents the reason I forgot this is because it was downstairs my parents mainly my mother got me the Royal Geographical Society's puzzle book this is downstairs because we've been doing it as a family, it's been really fun, that's the answers, that's how far we are. Um, and this is just a lot of like non-fiction facts and you go through and you try and either decode them by unscrambling an anagram or whatever, um, or you just see if you know the facts. It's a lot of fun, I'm looking forward to going through it with my family and I'm really annoyed that I missed it off the list. So there's one more book than I mentioned before. Is this one? Yay! The next book that I got for Christmas, and kind of the last book that I got for Christmas, I'll explain, is The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse. This was gifted to me by my longest childhood friend. I've not seen her since we were both seven or eight years old, and we always send each other cards and sometimes little presents. We weren't sending Christmas gifts, but she felt bad that she had missed my birthday and therefore was like a month late in sending my card so she decided to get me a present and I'm very grateful so I'm sure you guys have seen this book around but it's a gorgeous illustrated work all done by Charlie Mackesy and there's no real plot line other than traveling and getting to know themselves but you can really dip in and out of this book um, I read it from cover to cover but now that I have read it I can quite easily just go in and this one page what is the bravest thing you've ever said asked the boy help said the horse and I think each page there are a few blank pages but each page <laughs> could be a piece of artwork or a little poem by itself at the mole like pig <laughs> nothing beats kindness said the horse it sits quietly beyond all things there's just a lot of them and although they do carry on and you see the characters develop um, there's no actual like storyline so you can pick it up wherever this is a coffee mug stain and it's on the back side of this page this mess here is where the owner's dog has walked through it it says the greatest illusion said them all is that life should be perfect and in pencil at the bottom charlie maxey's written my dog to walk over the drawing clearly trying to make the point so as you can tell i've already read this book I read it as my first read of 2019, so I'm filming this on the 4th. It's going up a few days later, so I've already read this one. It's the only book I've finished so far this year, and I gave it 5 stars. It's not what I had expected at all. I thought it was just going to be fine, but it really is a book that you can read at any age, and I really do recommend having a look. Then next up, is the last Christmas present and the reason it's kind of is that I didn't open it on Christmas Day so I actually opened it I have 30th I think 29th 30th of December after I came back from York I spent three days down there spending time with him and his family for our Christmas because I was working retail over the actual Christmas period um, and we have this tradition uh, that comes from when we lived in Germany. So it's only in certain parts of Germany, but in certain areas of Deutschland, they hide a gherkin or an ornament now of a gherkin in the Christmas tree and the children have to find it and whichever child finds it gets a present. Now I'm an only child. I always have been, I always will be other than the cat. And whilst we love the cat and she does get treated better than me sometimes, she can't hunt for a gherkin. So <laughs> I always get the present and I'll get it anyway even if I don't find the gherkin they'll find another reason to give me the present they'll keep it for another day but it is always there and they reminded me when I came back that I hadn't yet found the gherkin so I went a hunting 
and I found it. And in return for finding our gherkin ornament, I got Silka's Journey, which is the second book in the Tattooist of Auschwitz series. They... it's a sequel, and I've not read it yet, but the first book is based on... is his name Lael? Is his name Lael? It is. Uh, it's based on Lael's true story of his time in Auschwitz, and Silke is the woman who he loved, and who was also in Auschwitz with him. They didn't meet until they were in the concentration camps, and so this is going to be a story about from his point of view, because the author Heather Morris spoke to Lael and interviewed him. Silka had already passed away by this point, so Heather wasn't able to actually interview her herself. So there are biases in this book, um, and then obviously Heather will have had to any lapses in Lael's memory, like he can't confirm anything that's happened, she'll have had to make up a plausible scenario, so linking them travelling from A to B, and if he can't remember what happened, she might have written that they were forcibly marched there by the Germans. She can't confirm it ever happened, but it probably did. So if you want to know more, I recommend researching it yourself. I haven't yet. I kind of don't want to until I've read it so that I can get like a view of it myself um, and just see how it goes for how I read it. And then that was the last of the presents. Thank you very much, Mum and Dad. And finally is a gift kind of but it wasn't for christmas so there's a place called barter books up in Ack, and we give a lot of our books there so my dad doesn't keep any of the books he reads my mum doesn't keep the books that she reads and sometimes i'll get rid of some of mine but also family like me aunt um my aunt reads a lot of thrillers i tend to recommend everything kayla reads to her just to kind of get her to see what she thinks and she will donate all of her books as well but sometimes it's ones that she knows I'll be interested in so she tells me to go and find them and steal them from the pile before they get given to this barter bookshop um, and so this one was A Stranger in the House by Shari Lupina I'm not going to read the synopsis I can't remember what it's about I was told a while ago but I don't want to remember I want to go into it without knowing anything from the synopsis and see what I think and then with those books that we took to Bart Books, so what you do is you go, you go there, you hand in the books, they'll pick and choose what they want, and then you'll get a balance. And you can then spend that balance on books, CDs, DVDs, but mainly books back in Bart Books, back in the shop. And we had, once we handed in these ones that we did this time, we went on uh, New Year's Eve on the 31st and once we handed those ones in we had £115 of credit for this <laughs> bookshop. Um, they're all second hand books, the books tend to be about half the RRP so but yeah my mum decided to pick up quite a few books for the primary school that she works for because they don't have many books. I tend to donate my childhood books if I'm ever getting rid of any kids books of my own they go straight to my old school which is the school my mum works at, and she was picking up some more for them. And I picked up... I didn't get one down. I picked up five for myself. So, the first one... I'm going to have to retake the thumbnail. E. The first one is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This is another thriller. Um, I really don't know a lot of it. A lot about it. Oh, it's a bit ripped there. Um, he's woken up into a weird world, don't want to know anymore. Beautiful sprayed edges. What about the dust jacket? Oh, it's got paint on it or something. Second hand book. So yeah, for me, it was free. It would have been £6.60, which isn't the cheapest. You can get them a lot cheaper in charity shops here in the UK, but I didn't actually pay. We don't pay for books from there. We just give our old books in and get new ones back which is very handy. So another thriller. Then I picked up Mind Games by Terry Terry. I spotted this and I just had to have it because I intend to read every single Terry Terry book that I find. I love her writing. I've read The Book of Lies, I've read The Slated Trilogy, I need to read the prequel for The Slated Trilogy. I haven't read that yet but I love everything that I read from her. I adore all of it so far so I want to read every single book she's ever published. 
Another author who I want to read every single book she's ever published is Claire North. This is actually a pseudonym. Uh, I'm not sure what her real name is or if she writes under her real name or anything, but Claire North is a pseudonym. She wrote The First Fifteen Lies of Harry August and she also wrote Touch. And this book, I didn't even read what Mind Games was about. It doesn't really say. Luna has a secret. She's different, but no one must find out, because in this world you must play their game. It could cost you your life. Will Luna discover her true destiny in time to save the one she loves? Probably, but we'll see. Uh, and then this one is follows Kepler, and with a simple touch, Kepler can move into anybody, live any life for a moment, a day, or for years, and your life could be next. So it's someone who can touch someone and take their life, and live their life. Um, whereas... Oh, it's there now. Another book I have, like I know, the end of the day, is George, George, Charlie, meets everybody once. I don't know once. Sometimes it's before they die, sometimes it's other things. So she's got really interesting book concepts and I want to read them all. So when I spotted this one, even though it's in a horrendous condition, I knew I had to pick it up and read it. Then we have Raging Star by Maury Young. This is the third book in the trilogy, the Blood Red Road trilogy. The second book was, does it say? Yes, Rebel Heart. I've not read it actually. It is somewhere in here. I just reorganised my shelves. But it is somewhere in there. I really enjoyed Bloodwood Road. I gave it four or five stars. Um, the writing style took me a while to get into because it's written in a dialect that isn't like any dialect I'm personally familiar with. Um, I think the author made it up but it'll have been inspired by a lot of things. But I just found it really, really interesting and I actually found Rebel Heart in this bookshop secondhand a couple of years ago now and I've still not read it. Uh, so again, it's in really bad nick. But that's the thing, like this would have cost me £2.50 and I wouldn't have spent that on a book. It's like, there's dog eared and there's what have you done? Has a dog eaten the end of the book? But because it was free and because like it wasn't free it took some money off our credit but we've still got 50 50 60 pounds of credit left so and it's not like i keep my books in perfect condition anyway um once i've read a book i kind of like it to have that red feel so once i've read this i'm sure i'll be fine with it uh don't want to say too much about what it's about but blood red road is set in the desert and two siblings wanting to stay with each other siblings siblings maybe siblings i think siblings i read it a while ago uh, and then the last book that i got in december was do not disturb by a r tor this is the second book in the i don't know what the name of it is but the first book was the girl in 6e so it's the second book in that series i think it's a trilogy the denim madden diana diana man d-e-a-n-n-a it's the second book in the Deanna Madden trilogy. This is about a woman who wants to kill. She'd love to kill, so she locks herself away so that she doesn't. And she ends up being a sex count worker in her flat, completely locked away, getting everything delivered to her through the internet, never opening her door until no one's there. And then she ends up leaving the flat because of circumstances. And this, like that could have been, I think that's on the back of the book anyway for Sixie. But so she leaves the flat because of circumstances and things happen and X, Y, Z. This is about the fact that she's out now. And she... It goes from there. I won't say anymore. It goes from there. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. If you watched, or do watch, watched I think, if you watched my January TBR. This is actually on my TBR for this year, for this, year, for this month. I just kind of decided to pop it on there, see if I can get to it. If I don't, I don't. If I do, great. So that is that. So how many books did I get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So, oh no. So these are the thirteen books that I got in December. Just swiveling them. Three of them were Christmas presents. <laughs> Three of them were Christmas presents. One was just a gift from a loved one. Four I bought myself and five I got free from handing in other books that my family had read. 
And those are all the books. <laughs> I'm actually hoping not to really be doing any more TBRs uh, in 2020. TBRs. What? I'm hoping not to be doing any more hauls in 2020. Um, I own enough books, I think. You know, just in my own personal opinion. Um, and it relates to my 2020 goal. Not of not buying books, but that video is going to come out in a few days. So if you are interested to see what my 2020 goal is, watch that one because it will explain everything. But so, yeah, I don't really want to be buying loads and loads more books. So hopefully that will be my last haul in a little while. If I get gifted any or sent any, or just, you know, if any come into my possession and I've not actively went seeking for them, then I'll be incredibly grateful for them and I'll love them and they'll be added to my shelves and I'll read them. But I'm not going to go and actively purchase any non-new release books. Because I'm sorry, I'm, I'm buying the Suzanne Collins book when it comes out. Like, fight me. Actually fight me. Although, my copies of The Hunger Game are in paperback. <laughs> what do I do? But yes, so... <laughs> Moving on. Last haul for a while. Good solid number. Very happy. If you want to see anything more from me, I'm going to be posting quite a few videos in a row for the next few days. Uh, I didn't get to do my wrapping up of 2019 before the year ended because I was working a full-time job in retail, so I was a little bit busy over Christmas. But I can do it now, so I'm just getting them out of the way, blasting them, getting them done. So if you want to see some more of them, click subscribe and click the bell so you can watch all of them. And if you enjoyed the video, please do hit like. If you want to see me anywhere else on the internet, then just check down in the description below. I'll have everything linked down there. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! I've got to put them all back now.